Hi, I'm Daniel Schulteis, and I work for Summit Sealants. Um, we are working over here in Gunnison at the Western Campus. And uh, today we are going to be repairing this terracotta stone and glazing. I would just uh, recommend gloves. And of course your hard hat and everything, because you know you're on the job site, protective colors, boots. We're gonna jump into fixing this stone right here. We're mainly gonna focus on all these spalls all these chips and nicks and everything, and then just get it reglazed up to make it look brand new again. So for materials, our first one is gonna be for our deeper patches. And this is the Yawn masonry mortar. And that, that, this is gonna be more for our uh, big chips and deeper patches like this. And it's a carvable mortar, our repair mortar as well. So that's why we're using it here. Our next material, is gonna be the thin fill. This is Edison coating. And uh, it's a two part system. This is the milk fort, it's the activator. And then it's just a powder. And that this is gonna be for our really small spalls, but noticeable. And so we're gonna fill those up with the thin fill. Our next material is right here. This is the glazing. This is also made by Edison coating. Um, these are custom colors because we had to match these stones. And what that's gonna do is kind of just give it this glazed look again so that it's nice and smooth and you won't even see any of the spalls. Okay, so first step is the yawn mortar. What we're gonna do is just get a little bit of water in this bucket. Yawn is mixed with water. What we're gonna do is start mixing up the on. You're gonna want the yawn to be sort of a drier, not too wet. It's gonna be more dry than most repair mortars. Next, what you need to do is apply water onto where you're gonna patch. This is called an SSD. This is so that it opens up the pores and when you do start patching it, it can bond better. So we're just gonna start applying the yawn like this. You always want to pull it into your edge. That way you get a good bond. Some of these patches are very tedious. Oh, there it goes. So the working time, it depends on the heat, but you can get anywhere from, I'd say, a half hour to you could even carve it two or three hours later if you really want to. A lot of the times if it's really deep, you wanna just put it up in lifts. And with lifts, what you do is just put about a quarter inch on at a time or less. Kinda of just shaping it with my finger right now. So we'll let this one sit for a second. We'll move on to this next one here. I wanna make sure you get a bunch of water in there because this is very porous. So what it does is it soaks up water like crazy. Now with yawn on the deeper patches, when I went to go uh, be certified for this material, they told you that you wanna do a butter coat usually. And what that is, is just kind of a wet coat. And so that'll kind of get, it's like a, almost like a primer for applying this. You just kind of spread it all around. And this is for your bigger, deeper patches, really. As you can see, that's drying very quickly too. So we can already just start applying more. What we're gonna do is we're gonna build this yawn up. 
doesn't have to look pretty at all at first because we're gonna be carving it. You just wanna patch the general shape of it. It's important to always pull the material into itself and like I said, work it into your edges. And this is where you wanna pay attention to detail right here. You wanna make sure that this is thoroughly patched. All edges are sealed. There's no low spots. That way it looks a lot more professional. I need a little extra material because I'm going to be carving an S into this patch right here. So that way when I carve the S, the S will stick out and I'll carve the back around it. So now we just gotta let the yawn sit for a little bit. We gotta get it to a, uh, a point to where it's carvable, but it won't fall apart too easy. It's sort of a sandy material, so it's kind of easier to carve. Rather where if you're using like patching, you know, concrete overhead or something, it's you can't really carve that material as well as this. Yeah, so now we're gonna let that yawn dry a little bit so we can carve it. And uh, we're gonna start with the thin fill, and this is for the small spalls. So this is usually your part A, is what I would call it, because you always wanna put the liquid in first. So what I'm gonna do is just pour a little bit because this goes a long way with this material. And then what you're gonna do now is you're just gonna add material just like the yawn. And then just mix it up. You wanna mix up little bits at a time because this material does go a long, long way. Add a little bit more here. We're gonna mix it up thoroughly too, so you got all the chunks out of there, and it's just a nice, smooth material. So this is still a little wet. I gotta add a little bit more material. That'll thicken it up a little bit. You want it a little thick so that it'll set up faster. And the more powder you add to it, it's gonna be a little bit stronger every time. I'm gonna get it right to that doughy consistency. So now what you do is you just get it on your ornamental tool and you just start going over all these little spalls right here. Make sure you're applying it very smoothly. You don't want to leave it rough at all. See how I'm kind of just plastering it on. I like to hold my finger in the front so you feel like you have more control while you're doing this. Yeah, the thin fill is just really meant for thin, small, you know what I mean? Small patches and all that. This might be considered, you know, in between some reason the yawn doesn't want to bond to it. So that's telling me that this is a, this is gonna be a thin fill patch because it's a lot thinner. The yawn works better when you're doing thick patches. And that's why we have the material here because some of these terracotta stones are beat up pretty bad. And as you can see, the thin fill is probably gonna work better in this situation. Again, it's very important to pay attention to detail because when you start glazing this, you wanna make sure that all loose ends are sealed. Otherwise, it's gonna stick out when you do glaze it. Before I cleaned these stones, they were really, just really dirty. I think a lot of it was from the tree, kinda of just you know leaking sap over the years and everything else, it was just collecting. It was really sticky. And so when we cleaned it, it was like uh, day and night almost. So you don't want to be applying mortar in anything that is uh, below 40 degrees, technically. They just, they recommend that because they don't want it, the material to freeze because then you're pretty much just compromised your repair. It's gonna lose all of its strength if it freezes and then thaws out again. So it always has to be above freezing and they recommend 40 degrees, so 40 and rising. But as you can tell, I mean, you're working with water, so it's pretty obvious that it will freeze. This is starting to dry now. And what I do is I kind of, I'll knock off all the loose ends. 
we'll kind of just knock off all the stuff that's on the actual glazing. That way you kind of single out your patch. So this, you can kind of just shape the ear with your finger. So some of these patches, you know, that are on ridges and angles, they kind of take a little bit of finessing. I'm never scared to use my finger if you have a light touch. I believe it helps a lot because sometimes there's some things that your tools just can't do. But it does take a bit of finessing just to get that shape. To make it look like it's natural. And what I'm doing right now too is making sure that I'm sealing my edges and shaping the ear to exactly how it was. And you can always reference off something like this. And then just continue to go through and kind of knock off all the loose stuff because you don't want that. You don't want it to dry like that. Fingers are good for blending in too. This is an ornamental tool. These are really actually meant for, uh, I mean, patching stone and everything. There's a lot of uh, stone carving artists use these too a lot. This is for detailed work. All this work is would be very difficult with a margin trowel. It's doable, but not fun. Yeah, if they're if they're dirty or if there's bad glazing, you can come in with the Dremel and you can kind of not like flake off, you know, bad glazing. That because you don't when you're patching, you don't want to be bonding to bad glazing because then you're kind of just defeating the purpose of fixing it. Because that, yeah, it'll just pop off because you just bonded to something bad. So it would defeat the purpose. But um, when I cleaned this, I made sure I got all of the uh, bad glazing off. This stuff you can kind of carve when it's drying. But you gotta be very gentle because you will knock your patch out or dig into it too deep and then that way you have to apply more. So now that this yawn is at a state where it's kind of dry, you can see that it's really a sandy type finish. So what I'm gonna do here now is the S was missing from state and I'm gonna carve the S out to make it look similar. So that way when we glaze it, that S will be back there. So you wanna start out with just kind of working your edges. And we're gonna carve everything around the S, but not the actual S. You need to come from different angles. If you push up on your corner, it's gonna break off. So you kinda of have to come down on it. This is gonna be the glazing. And what we have here is mixed colors. These are custom colors that we had to make just so we can match our terracotta. And um, all you really have to do is just have a paintbrush. You can actually use a roller too if you need. But um, I use a brush because you can kind of blend it in really well. And so what I'll do is I'll kind of knock off a lot of the heavy material on here. And then you just start going over the areas in which you put all of the thin fill and everything. And you always want to wait until it's all dry. In this case it is. And you just kind of start dabbing it. Covering up everything you patched. You get a nice smooth finish on it too. What's nice about this too is it can hide a lot of your sins. If you have any areas, you know, that are a little bit open or it's kind of like painting a wall. And so this is our base color right here. This is our first color we're applying. As you can see, there's tan, you know, it kind of blotches all throughout here. So what we're doing is getting that tan first. And you can see how that tan right here matches this tan right here. So this is going to take probably about two coatings because it's such a porous material that when it dries, you're going to be able to see kind of all the sand in it. So we'll go over that one again. Give it a nice soft gloss finish. It's already looking new again. How long does it take to dry? Uh, probably like, 
I'd say five or 10 minutes really, sometimes even less. I get a slight color shift when it dries? Yeah. Um, so they have uh, pigments. These are actually the pigments right here. So it's just kind of color coding. Okay. And you can put it in a uh, deep base white. So it's like a base color. And then you just mix up to get from there. Okay. They'll, they'll supply the pigments, but uh, yeah, you just kind of have to eyeball your own color and kind of write down formulas that you have for it. Because like you said, I mean, you're gonna get color, I mean, color shifts and all that. And yeah, yeah and once it dries, it'll kind of, uh, it kind of doles down. Because right now it's glossy, because we just applied it. Yeah. So once it uh, really kind of calms down, it'll blend in more. And then uh, that's when we put on the uh, secondary color. And that's gonna match this white right here. Give it that two-tone, you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's just a matter of this drying now and then going over it. And then after we do, I mean, after we finish the whole stone, we give it a nice wash again. I've already washed it, but it was just kind of a getting everything off. And then what we do is we actually use like a environmental safe cleaner. And what it does is it takes off more pollution. I mean, earth growth, like things like moss, because there's, I mean, there's moss on the mortar in some areas and which we're going to be retuck pointing this too, but we use actual mortar for that. And okay. that's a whole separate thing is we have our own color. We had to get approved to match this color. So we had to do color matches, just like we're doing with this here, but for the mortar. But, and that's typically a lot easier and cheaper. Cool. Can, if the crack is deep enough, if it's a dynamic crack that goes all the way through, you can kind of fill it up and then it'll bond it back together. But things like this, where it's just kind of aesthetics, we'll just open it up, thin fill it, and then exactly what we did with here, just go back over with color. Yeah. yeah, but we clean it initially so that we can get that color. That's how we match the color. Yeah. Because if we were to match before it was clean, it would be totally different colors. This is the off-white color. And this is what's gonna give us that two-tone. So this, you just wanna kinda blend in. And you don't wanna fully cover ever, all the tan. Because you're gonna want those spots. With this second tone too. I'm, my hand is a lot less heavy. This is where the blending comes in. You gotta really just kind of blend it into its surroundings. I found coffee cups are the best to mix custom colors in because you can just throw a lid on it. That way it won't set up on you. Because this stuff is really temperamental in the heat, it'll skin, the whole top will skin over if it's really hot outside. And then you're picking out you know, chunkies and... Um, I prefer brush just because I, I found it was easier for me just to, I mean, with hand motions and everything, but um, you can use a, a bunch of stuff. You can use, um, you can use sea foam to kind of dab it and stuff. Um, you can also use sea foam rollers. There's quite a bit of things that you can do to apply it. It's all just, it's preference at that point. I've just found it easier with a brush. This is like uh, pretty much the final step. The last step is just a clear coat. And that's just a quick, you know, you just go over everything you did with clear. And that's that kind of is what seals it. And uh, keeps it uh, UV protectant. Because the sun will fade everything and anything. And uh, this is water soluble too, so you can just always clean your brushes off. That's why I have the bucket of water here. Just kind of give it a couple. That way you can preserve your, your brushes and everything. Now I'll apply one more coat of the tan to the yawn. Like I said, it's a very porous material, so you can kind of see once it dries and calms down, you can see all the repatched. So. I'm gonna give it a nice heavy glaze. If you notice any areas where you went too heavy on the white, you could always come back with the tan. You can apply clear coat on this now though. It looks white, but when you apply it, once it starts drying, it becomes really transparent and then it becomes glossy. And this you can put on a little heavier. 
and you can just even go all around the area that you did just to make sure you get that nice gloss in there so it doesn't look patchy want to make sure you get it in all the crevices and everything too and now you can see it's kind of slowly it'll start to slowly just become clear just gives it good protection you know